Hi everybody. Welcome to another edition of Who, What, Wine Pair. Today we're going to be talking all things shellfish with a very, very special guest. Andrea is here. She is part of our incredible winemaking team. And uh, since harvest is now over, I know your time has been freed up a little bit. So it's so nice to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Super excited to be here. Yeah, we're going to be eating some incredible shellfish, um, some hot preparations, some cold preparations, um, some, some local products. Um, a lot of stories mixed in, and of course, we're going to be featuring um, our diamond wines, which I love, which we've been really focusing on um, during these uh, sessions of Who What Wine Pair. Um, Andrea, what can you tell me about yourself? I know you're relatively new I am. to I'm the Coppola team. The newest member to the winemaking team. Wow, so, welcome. Um, thank you. And how long have you been here? It's Just been about six months. Six months. Okay. Yeah, so I had my first harvest here and we all survived, so that was good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I grew up here in Sonoma County, wow. actually, a fourth generation Sonoma Countyan. Um, so, yeah, so I feel really at home here and um, I'm excited about these wines. They're super approachable and really easy to drink and I'm excited about your food the most. So We're going to eat good. Yeah. I got a good feeling yeah. about that. Well, it's nice to have you. Thank and you. Thanks for being here. Thanks. I think you're going to have some slam dunks, but I think you're also going to have a couple of challenges along the way. I'm a little nervous, yeah. to be honest. Yeah, it should, <laughs> should be good though. Um, you know, like you said, these wines are just so great and so approachable and so yeah. food friendly. And, you know, I think shellfish and shellfish, shellfish uh, preparations really uh, lend themselves to wine pairing, wouldn't you say? Yes, yeah. for sure. I, uh, I love a glass of cold wine, um, yeah. either red or white, yeah. with, my, uh, with my shellfish. So yeah. I'm excited about that part. Definitely. Yeah. Okay, well, let's hop right in there because we're okay. doing 10 dishes. So we're gonna be we're gonna be busy. Um, okay, you're gonna you, be busy. I'm just gonna be over here eating and drinking. So I'm okay right, with that. I'll try to keep up. Um, so uh, the first dish I want to start with um, is uh, oysters on the half shell, um, which to me is if you're gonna do ten shellfish, sort of the iconic dish to start with. Um, so we're gonna prepare it uh, a few different ways, um, and these are incredible Kumamoto oysters that are. Um, locally harvested. Um, I shucked a few ahead of time, um, but then I saved one so we could do a little demo for our guests out there um, on how to shuck an oyster. So basically, regardless of the size and, and species of oyster, you're going to shuck it in the same way. Um, so here we have a couple of these oysters, and this is what you call an oyster shucker. Right? Now when you're handling one of these things, um, you may not think you can get hurt with one of these because there's not necessarily an edge, but you can get hurt with these. So uh, the most important thing when shucking oysters is to be safe, okay? Now, usually there's a top side and a bottom side to an oyster, and then there's this little sweet spot on, on where the shells meet. And it's just a little, you know, vulnerable spot of the shells, and that's where you want to pry um, your oyster knife into and kind of wiggle it around until the top shell um, releases itself. Now when we talk about uh, when we talk about shellfish there's two general classifications of, of shellfish. There's mollusks and crustaceans. So your mollusks would be um, oysters, clams, mussels, those kinds of things. And then crustaceans which we'll get into next is uh, creatures with this exoskeleton, like a shrimp or a lobster or a crab or something like that. And then you also have gastropods, which are um, like an abalone or a, uh, any variety of sea snails or whelks or periwinkles, which we have out here on our coast, which are really, really delicious. Um, and then you have a cephalopod, which is um, uh, squid and oysters and those kinds of things. A lot of people don't think of those as shellfish, but by definition they are um, a shellfish and they're considered a cephalopod, even though they don't have this um, exterior, exterior shell um, like these or like the shell of a crab or a lobster. So anyway, that's the spiel on shellfish. So what I like to do is I like to have my oyster knife and I like to have a towel like so. And then once I've located that sweet spot, then I'm gonna slowly just sort of wiggle this knife in there until the oyster pops itself. 
right? Now, then you wanna wiggle off the shell just like so. Now, whenever you're presenting an oyster, when you present it, you want it to look the exact way it does the, the, the moment you shuck it. You know, you don't wanna go in there mashing it up um, or, or messing sort of with the integrity of this, this beautiful uh, sea creature here. So you just wanna delicately um, uh, release it from the shell, just like that. You know, you don't want to um, mess it up too much. You want to look. You want it to look like it was just shucked. Now the oyster itself is held on to the shell at this piece right here. So that's really all you want to do is you want to separate the oyster from that little muscle that holds it onto the shell. And there you have it. They don't always go that easy. <laughs> Um, but this one, luckily, we're on camera. That went easy. So, the, the few variations we're going to do is we have all the oysters lined up here. Um, the one on our left, I'll leave totally plain. Okay. The one in the middle, we're going to hit it with um, a little bit of Meyer lemon. Um, now, this is an awesome variety of lemon. I'm sure growing up in Sonoma County, yep. you know all about these. We, we didn't. I didn't really see these in Philadelphia growing up, although now they're more widely available um, and this is the first of the year you'll see they're not totally yellow and will turn a little more orange as the as the um, uh, the winter goes on so these are really the, the very first lemons off of our trees so you'll see it in a few different um, preparations here so the middle oyster we're just going to hit it with a little bit of this Meyer lemon now the flavor profile of a Meyer lemon is more sweet than a, a traditional Eureka lemon it's sort of a nice balance between the sweet and sour, and it's just incredible flavor. And then uh, for the last oyster, we're going to have another classical garnish, and this is what's known as mignonette. This is a red wine mignonette. So it's uh, simply just red wine, um, a little bit of minced shallot, and a little bit of black pepper. So then we're just going to put just a little bit of this on top of that last oyster. Just like so. And that's gonna add some nice, really bright acidity to the um, to the oysters. There you go, Andrea. Thank you. Yeah, so there's the menu okay. towards me. These look amazing. Yeah, these are great. You know, I tend to like the, the smaller oysters. Yes, me too. Yeah, sometimes those bigger ones can be a little bit too much to handle, yeah. kind of a big mouthful. A few times I had some off of like the Oregon coast and yeah. they were, Everyone was so excited that they were so big, and really? Ooh. it wasn't really my cup of tea. Yeah, this I'm is amazing you. looking. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. And I just plated it. You know, lots of times you'll see these on, served on crushed ice. Yep. Um, if you don't have crushed ice, this like is a, a great uh, uh, substitute. It's uh, rock salt with some different spices and peppercorns. It just allows the oysters to sit on something, right? You know, so that it doesn't go. Well, it looks around. beautiful. Shall we try? Yes. All right. So I'm gonna go for the plain first. Yep. Mm. Mm. I mean, it just tastes, it just tastes of the ocean to me. Mm. Um, Super briny, yeah, I like it's it. Very briny, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so what are you thinking? Um, are you thinking that, would you select a different wine depending on, on what is, I was just thinking served. that. I was yeah. getting a little, I, I thought I w was pretty sure on what wine we were going to have. And yeah. then I was like, oh, well, you know, depending on what we're serving it with. But yeah. I think I think we could be lucky enough to um, just use one wine for okay. all three. Okay. Um, I feel like oysters are really delicate yeah. and the flavor is, you know, just that of the ocean, mm -hmm. really. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we should go Pinot Grigio. I love it. So, that sounds awesome. Um, I think just, that should go real well. It's mineral and crisp and clean, mm -hmm. and hopefully we'll, the saltiness of the ocean and that will pair nicely together. Great so, idea. Yeah. Great idea. Um, Let's try it. Okay. Do we have a Pinot Grigio? We do. Should we? Oh, so here's the real question, though. Yeah. Do we go cans or do we go the bottle? I think we'll go bottle. Okay. Let's do okay. that. That sounds great. I love the, uh, oh, uh, I mean, my mind is just thinking the mineral minerality of that wine and that brininess yep. of the oyster might play really well together. Um, do you have a go-to? Here you uh, are. Thank you so much. I just I mean, love that color. For myself, yeah. um, if I was out at a restaurant and ordering 
oysters, mm -hmm. I would actually be ordering sparkling. Yeah, um, that would be nice too. Just because it's so light and so delicate, just like the oyster, but yeah. this is gonna mm -hmm. be nice too. Mm. So, oh cheers. My gosh. <laughs> That's awesome. Wow, so beautiful. I love this. Mm. So light and crisp. Mm. I don't think it'll compete, but it'll really just um, uh, marry really, really well with that with that oyster. I'm gonna try it with a little bit of the Meyer lemon one yes. on this. Hmm. Boy, that Meyer lemon. Hmm. That's my first that's taste delicious. of Meyer lemon. Yeah, that's really nice. A little sweeter, oh. not quite as sour. I think if it, it was straight sweet. lemon, it may have. Right. The Meyer, I think, did help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that oyster was very creamy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those Kumamoto's are really, really nice. Hmm. Love it. Mm, what a that's way to delicious. start. Yes. What a way to start shellfish. Um, and I'm excited about this one the most. This is my favorite way of having them. Mignonette. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's mm. nice. Ooh, zesty. That is really nice. I don't like using too much of that mignonette yeah. on there. Just a couple of drops really, really helps. I think that was a good pair. Yeah, that was nice. Well what, done. What a way to spend the afternoon. <laughs> it was starting a little early today too, <laughs> two o'clock. I yeah. know. Yeah, I definitely didn't feel guilty at four o'clock, but two o'clock, yeah. Now you can still go home and have dinner too, yeah, you know? That's true, that's true. <laughs> Pretend that we haven't been hanging around uh, right. eating shellfish all afternoon. And drinking wine. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Fine by me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, um, how did you get into shellfish? Have you always liked fish? I have. My father is a big fisherman. No kidding. And uh, I was gonna save my story for later, but I might as well go into it now. Okay. Um, my dad used to also have a crab boat. Wow. So he would go out crabbing and I had the fortunate experience to be able to go crabbing with him, with Ooh. my daughter. Oh my and gosh. my dad is also an abalone diver. Wow. So we always grew up with all sorts of fish and shellfish and all of that oh in our house. Gosh. So that's so cool. He's also a hunter. So we is had he? a lot of bizarre meats, but, <laughs> but the fish was always good. Wow. <laughs> That's so, so cool. Yeah. That's so neat. Yeah, um, yeah I, I like to fish and uh, I don't do much hunting, but I do like to duck hunt. Yeah. Um, but I do love uh, crab and I know our season just started here yes. on Saturday. I'm super excited yeah. about the fact that it's, uh, not excited about the fact that we're getting closer to winter, right. but excited about the fact that it's crab season, yeah, so. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, you know, when I, when I think, as the nights start getting cool, you know, it's, it's triggers something in my brain as a chef. You know, I start thinking about, well, those root vegetables and mushrooms popping out in the forest, right. but also the crab and, and the oysters. Like, as that water gets really cold yes. around here and everywhere, the shellfish is so good. Yeah. Good job with that first pairing. All right. That well, is delicious. One. What a great way to start. <laughs> Love it. One we got done. Okay. Well, uh, following on the heels of what you were saying, we're going to do something really kind of fun. Um, to, to go into our second course here. We're gonna be making uh, or serving a ceviche. Mm. So a, cevi a ceviche is basically a, a marinated seafood product, I guess is what you would say. And um, it's marinated in lime juice and other things. Uh, red onion, lime juice, uh, cilantro. And the, what the lime juice does is actually sort of cooks those proteins a little bit. Um, and we're gonna make that with abalone which is really cool. Um, so these are, these are the shells of the abalone. This is, um, you can just see, it's just an absolutely stunning shell with that mother of pearl interior. And this is um, a, a small abalone, but I think this one is still several years, years old. They take quite some time. And these are farm raised, I should uh, clarify that. Um, our season around here is closed. And this would certainly be undersized. Yes, I was gonna say, that's awfully tiny. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, but, um, you know, they, they farm raise them in Monterey uh, and they're just an incredible product. Um, so, you know, I think uh, myself and a lot of people know abalone, um, you know, for people that aren't in the coastal California area or uh, in a place um, where you don't have abalone. Um, it's, it's, a, it's like a, it's a sea snail basically. And, um, the, the animal lives inside this shell and just sort of 
crawls around uh, reefs and things like that. And they can be very tough. So how did, how did your dad used to uh, tenderize his abalone? So he spent many hours pounding abalone. Um, <laughs> wow, so and we funny. were always like responsible for watching him cut off the foot and all oh, of really? that. So, yeah. um, but, and pounding. So he would pound it into oblivion. And then <laughs> um, we always had it pan fried. Oh, okay. So he always had a cook stove like you have right now yeah. outside because oh, my wow. mom always said oh, yeah. that it smelled too much in the house. <laughs> um, so he would cook it outside on, you know, um, the stove out there yeah. and uh, he would bread it and it was delicious, like melt in your mouth. That's so, so fast. and then uh, recently we were able to have it like a, a restaurant actually prepared it for us Ooh. using the abalone that my dad had no as a special favor. And wow. it was amazing. That's it was so cool. Yeah. So a little Thai style. Yeah. So that was, oh gosh, that was really good. Neat. Yeah. Yeah. You can really um, take it in many different ways, right? Yeah. I mean, with that flavor profile. So, you know, I heard um, somebody describe it as a mix between clams and foie gras, which I thought was an interesting hmm. uh, description of it, because you certainly have that sort of clammy, sort of ocean yes. flavors, but you could tell that there's something else going on there. You yeah. know, there's, a, there's sort of like a kind of a complex flavor, like, like maybe a snail you would find like that. Right. Yeah. So we made a little um, ceviche ahead of time. So what we have here is these, these the abalones that came out of these, these gorgeous shells right here. We diced it up, well, we, we shucked it and got it all clean and uh, pounded it, just like you were saying, Andrea, because it can be really tough. And I didn't pound it into oblivion because I still want to <laughs> get a little texture. Uh, but this is sort of all those flavors of uh, a ceviche. And I can tell that it's cooked, you know, it's turned that sort of opaque color. And um, as a fun preparation, we are going to um, serve it in the shell. And this shell has been uh, very thoroughly cleaned um, and sanitized, so um, we don't have to worry about that. And I think that's it. I'm gonna have to bring this recipe back to my dad and yeah. tell him that he's uh, now responsible for upping his game. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of pressure. This looks amazing. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so I think we'll get all those sort of um, classical flavors. And you have a spoon over there. I do. Okay, you'll find all these classical flavors. And what a cool, what a cool presentation to be it able is. To, to serve that shell. Yeah. Serve that meat in that shell. Um, definitely got a little crunch to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I think these smaller abalones are, are really mild. Yeah. Um, I, I find as you, you know, you have a, a, a harvest, a wild one, it can really have that, that um, sort of pronounced flavor. Right. But these, these little ones. It's um, very delicate. Yeah, it's really, really, and the texture, I mean, if, if this wasn't diced so small, it would be pretty tricky mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to, um, eat. In fact, what I was going to do was serve it with one of these. I knew I was forgetting something. This is um, a little little tostada. Oh. In fact, the best tasty tostada. Um, we use these um, in the kitchen a lot um, for family meal. Can I pass you one of yes, those? Yes, please. Um, and then you use it like as a chip? Exactly. And dip yeah. it in there? Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Or use your spoon to kind of pile it on there. Oh, that would be classier, probably. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a fun, fun way to enjoy it. Kind of keeping with that uh, Mexican theme. Hmm. Hmm. What do you think? I really like it. Mm. It's a very different way than I've ever had abalone, so it's exciting. Yeah. Um, oh man, this is hard. It's hard. <clears throat> it's definitely got a lot of bright acid. Yes. Is that kind of what you're thinking is yes. what's making it challenging? And yes. The, and the onion is pronounced. It is. Um, and this probably wouldn't be people's first choice, but who mm -hmm. knows? Yeah. Um, with Mexican food, right, traditionally, but right. I think the rosé is gonna be really nice. Like that 
light, fresh strawberry with mm. some citrus. Mm. And maybe it'll kind of marry in with the onion and not overpower because it's so delicate, yeah. the flavor. That, yeah, it is. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to overpower it. So yeah. we're going to go rosé and see, see what happens. I like that. That sounds good. Now, what can you tell me about this rosé? So this rosé, um, it is rosé of uh, Pinot Noir. Okay. And we do a process which is called direct to press. Okay. Um, there's many ways that you can make rosé. Okay. Um, but this is by far my favorite way of making rosé. And cool. basically you take the whole grapes of the Pinot Noir and you put them straight into your press, mm. um, which basically just squeezes out the juice. Okay. And if you get the grapes at just the right ripeness, um, they have really that bright fruit forward flavor mm -hmm. um, and you will get light color. Oh, so cool. if you... So the, the color from here is... Um, just from the, the brief contact with the skin. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that keeps it the, the nice, beautiful color that we know. Yep. So if you have a really dark rosé, that just means it either had more skin contact or it was maybe even a riper, okay. uh, riper fruit when okay. it was harvested. So. Uh, because most grape juice is clear, right? Um, I think there's a couple varietals. That... Yeah. There's there's a few red grapes that actually the inside flesh is red. Okay. Um, there's not very many of them. Okay. I, I think I can actually only think of one. Wow. <laughs> but yeah, cool. I think there's two or three. Okay. Um, so even, you know, Merlot and Cabernet, the innards are um, a clear, you know, green color. So um, you can get rosé out of really any any uh, varietal that okay. we have here. So okay. cool. what do you think? I wow, saw your, I, I saw love your face. it. I think, I mean, it's just drinking so delicious. And just a just a little bit of sweetness, I think, is going to yep. go really well with that abalone. Help bring out that sort of natural sweetness. Yeah. Ooh, I think this is a good. Okay, let's try it. There's so many things to do over here. I have mm -hmm. my <laughs> my tostada, <laughs> my abalone, mm -hmm. my wine. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is tough. Multitasking over here. Ooh, I like that. I think it does fine with the acid of the... Yeah. Mm. What do you think? I think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think there's just enough citrus in the mm -hmm. rosé to kind of, not mimic, but mm -hmm. it's similar mm -hmm. in that lime profile. So yeah. it's nice. And there, the sweetness kind of cuts some of the onion. Yeah, I love that. Excellent call. Excellent mm. call. I could just sit here by the pool all afternoon. Do we have to keep going? I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I've got abalone and rosé. I'm good. <laughs> it's warm. Yeah, this is awesome. Oh, this is sad. I want to eat all of this. Yeah, oh, please. <laughs> um, yeah, it's neat to have abalone like this, um, you know, because, fun. you know, for the longest time I had had it kind of the way you described it, you know, slice it and uh, pound it and bread it and fry mm -hmm. it. I think the first time I veered away from that, I don't know where I was inspired from somewhere, but I poached the whole abalone, mm -hmm. um, pounded it, the whole one, mm -hmm. and then and then poached it in butter. And it, it oh. must have been, you know, 12 yeah. or 18 hours, like really low, like 150 yeah. degrees. And it got to the point where it was so tender, you could actually reach in there with chopsticks and pull oh, wow. off, yeah, pull off big chunks of abalone and the flavor to get like a big mouthful of it was really intense. Uh, but a neat way to do it. Huh. So I like thinking of different ways to Yeah, that's uh, exciting. Thing. That's, yeah, that's fun. Pretty, pretty cool, huh? And the presentation of it is beautiful. Can't beat that. Yeah. Well, I, hopefully your dad would approve. Oh, I think he will. Yeah. I'm going to tell him about it. He's going to be like, what? <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I have a I have a friend. I don't dive, but I have a friend who um, used to when the season was open. Yeah. He, I think he told me about the abalone ceviche originally. Nice. Yeah. That's yeah. a cool, cool technique. Yep. All right. Good pairing. Thank you. Thank you. That's terrific. That was delicious. All right. Next up, this is where the comment section may explode out there to all of our <laughs> awesome viewers out there. Um, I hope everybody's enjoying it so far. Um, please uh, let us know in the comments if you have any questions or 
or how you like serving abalone or oysters or whatever the case may be. We love that interaction. Um, so next up, we're gonna be doing a lobby roll, a lobster roll. Um, now we're gonna be doing it um, in a Connecticut style. So one of our incredible production people here um, who inspires me regularly um, with all these uh, awesome food ideas um, taught me about the Connecticut style lobster okay. roll, which is really, really exciting. Um, I've never been to Connecticut, no? so, no. I don't know if I've stepped foot in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I know I've taken a train through it before, <laughs> but I think I've probably, I've probably hung out there a little bit. Beautiful part of the country. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I love New England so much. That, that Connecticut yes. is really nice. Beautiful waterfront, and great pizza culture, great um, seafood culture, all kinds of great things. So we are gonna uh, prepare it on a similar uh, roll as um, you would find uh, on a traditional main lobster roll. Now, um, I'm interested to see what everybody's experience with lobster rolls is. Um, usually for me, I like some, you know, some steamed, real big chunks of lobster with just, a, just enough mayonnaise to mm -hmm. coat it, and then onto a fresh roll just like this. Now, the Connecticut style um, is uh, the same kind of roll, but we're gonna dress the, dress the fresh lobster in a little bit of uh, drawn butter. Um, and then garnish Can't it with a little I think we're on to something. <laughs> and then garnish it with a little paprika. Okay, so. I don't think I've ever had this style before. No? I've only I'm ever had kind of chunk lobster mm -hmm. mixed with some mayo, maybe celery, yeah. dill, yeah. other flavors. Yeah. Kind of maybe takes away from the lobster. So yeah, this is I, think that's, I think that's what yeah. con Connecticut is thinking. Um, <laughs> They're onto something. Yeah, and around here, I know we we do sort of a knockoff of our Dungeness crab roll, right? Right. Um, down in Bodega Bay, I love mm -hmm. getting those uh, crab rolls there. Um, so, I uh, went ahead and I steamed a um, one and a half pound lobster um, that we had um, brought in from from Maine. Here's some beautiful chunk lobster meat. which is what, a, what, a, what an awesome treat. So we're just gonna go in there with our lobster meat. And I left the chunks real big, because when I'm eating right. lobster, I wanna kinda know Feel what I'm eating. Feel that it's lobster. Yeah, yes. exactly. I don't want it all mushed up or um, think that it's um, some imitation business going on. So we're just gonna drizzle this with a little, eh, I guess it's more than a little bit of drawn <laughs> butter. And a little bit of that milk solids in there for flavor. Okay, maybe I take back us eating dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may want to. We may want to rethink that, huh? Um, so that, that's that's really as simple as it as it gets. There, we're gonna um, we're gonna take this lobster meat and just mix it in with this beautiful um, local. Um, Wonderful lobster, and now the lobster's cold and the butter's warm, but as that butter um, cools down to that same temperature of the lobster, it's gonna coat the lobster real nicely, especially if you kind of keep stirring like that, okay? And then all we're gonna do is we're gonna pile it high in these uh, split side rolls here. And you know, with with lobster for me and crab, um, you know it's it's great to, you know, be generous with the lobster, right? I mean, this I agree. dish. Is, <laughs> it's the most disappointing when you order lobster or something, you know, right? so exciting, and you only get one little piece. No kidding, especially yours. We got to be extra generous with. Right? <laughs> That's right. Otherwise, I'll make you drink something that won't necessarily go with it. <laughs> you go ahead. Try this one. <laughs> try it first. So here we go. There's our little Connecticut Ooh, that's style. That's amazing. Thank Connecticut you. Connecticut style lobster roll. Um, so this is a boy. That's a real treat. And what I like about the Connecticut style is, um, you know, it really lets the lobster shine. Um, you know, there's not the you know sweetness or the acidity of that mayonnaise. Um, it's just a real Nice flavor from that lobster. There we go with the toasted bun on the side. 
that looks good. Everybody out there drooling yet? That looks pretty good. It's so big, I don't even know if it I'm is, going to be able to put my mouth around it. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> much. But that's oh. pretty good. Uh-huh. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm. Very buttery. Mm. Mm -hmm. So buttery. Good? Mm-hmm. Amazing. Yeah, that is a that is a special. And then all I mean all I did with the lobster was we set up a little steamer in the kitchen and steamed it for about 12 minutes. Um, after 12 minutes, then we put it in ice water, let it chill down, and then processed all the meat. Um, boy, but that is nice, isn't it? Is it is so good. Yeah, what a treat, and very buttery. I mean, the edges of the, uh, the bread mm -hmm. were buttered before we toasted it up, right mm -hmm. before we went live, um, and that little bit of butter on the lobster. I'm saving all of this, and I'm gonna eat it all later when we're done. <laughs> good call, good call. <laughs> Mm. Mm. You know, I thought I had my mind made up mm -hmm. about this until mm -hmm. you said there was paprika on it. Mm. And I was like, oh man, <laughs> I don't know where to go now. <laughs> yeah, that definitely sort of changes the whole It's good, like the, the smoky, dish. it's mm -hmm. kind of smoky and mm -hmm. just a different, it cuts the butter. Yep. So it's really nice. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh, that is, that is good. It is really good. Um, I think we're gonna go with the Pavilion Chardonnay. Mm. And I normally wouldn't say like, we should have Chardonnay with something that's super buttery because okay. you know, if you think of Chardonnay or classic California Chardonnay, it's pretty buttery. Mm -hmm. um, but the Pavilion is a little less of that, a little okay. less buttery, a little less oaky, a little more bright acidity. Um, so maybe, you know, that can play nice. um, off of there. I might have to you have room for a couple more chunks down oh, here? Oh yeah. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Boy, that's good. What do you think of the Connecticut style? Uh, I like Connecticut even more than I thought I was going <laughs> to like it before. So yeah. good job, Connecticut. Yeah. On the, uh, see if I can get her dress to come down. All she right. doesn't, her dress. And I know we've talked about this. Her dress uh, doesn't want to come. <laughs> oh, come on. Why are you going to be so It's a beautiful feisty? packaging. It is beautiful. Uh, and that and net, it's that net comes on our claret. Super easy. Here right? we go. Yes. Comes on our claret, and then it comes on the comes on the claret the and the pavilion. There okay. we go. Now we've got our dress going here. I love that. We got to twist her up so that so way her, long, her dress doesn't look like it's hanging off. No, there we, we don't. Go. We don't want now we're that. good. So how did you get into wine? Oh, you know, I uh, I grew up in Sebastopol okay. on an apple orchard. Wow. So nothing to do with wine okay um and at that time no one was drinking cider either yeah. actually um an old neighbor of ours uh owns golden state oh, cider nice. so cool. um yeah she's a little younger than i am okay. um and it's pretty exciting yeah. that they've done so well um but i never thought i was going to get into any sort of alcoholic uh product production by any yeah. means but um I went away to school and kind of came back to Sonoma County and was like, well, what's left besides <laughs> wine? Um, and I love agriculture and all okay. things having to do with nature and being outside. Yeah. Um, so it was kind of a perfect fit for me. I thought, cool. well, I'm just going to start at a winery, see what I want to do with yeah. my life. Yeah. And almost 20 years later, here wow. I am still. Oh my so gosh. yeah, that's so cool. Yeah. I love Sebastopol. I'm always yeah. jealous of people that grew or like born and raised so vast. You know, like, I never wanted to go back there though. <laughs> I mean, it was small. It was That's small true. and, um, you know, we were like the, the hick hippies. Okay. You know, like That's kind of the, we wore Wranglers the with flowy there. shirts and, you know, <laughs> cared about the environment. Yeah. I don't know. So, um, that's kind of a mix out there in Sebastopol, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It is, and we all were a little bit of all of it. So that's so cool. It was uh, it was a great place to grow up. Yeah. There just wasn't a whole lot to do other than like rotten apple fights <laughs> and that kind of thing. So my sister and I did plenty of those. <laughs> did you guys grow Gravensteins? We did. We had Gravensteins. Okay. Um, we ha we had a mix. Okay. A mix of different apples, but. Um, Gravenstein was everyone's favorite in terms okay. of pie making. Ooh. And then we had some Jonathan apples, mm -hmm. um, which actually are really amazing straight off the tree, but I would Ooh. never recommend to buy in the store. Okay. Um, so yeah. lots of lots of different experiences with apples. So. Thank you. 
Thank you. Pavilion Chardonnay. Okay, let's see. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, nice brightness. Mm. Okay, I think I have right to take another flavor. bite just I think to make so. sure. Yeah, I think I may need a several here. The right, uh, right pairing here. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. I like that. This wine is so well balanced between the acidity, a little mild sweetness, fruit mm. flavor. I think it goes pretty nice. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> okay, again, I'm gonna go sit by the pool <laughs> with, my, <laughs> with my food and my wine. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is I'm interested delightful. to see if this would have gone well had that been a main style. With that right, mayonnaise. Right, with a creamy. Yeah, it may have not worked so well. Right, I was really thinking the paprika kind of offsets a little bit of the sweetness and mm -hmm. the butter here, mm -hmm. so. Yep, yeah. I don't know, I, I think it's it. pretty nice. But Nicely done. I think right now you probably couldn't give me something that I couldn't pair something amazing <laughs> with at this point, so. <laughs> Yeah, boy, that is a treat. Mm. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know, today is my mother's birthday, right. but I feel like it should be my birthday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is pretty great. Sorry, I, mom. I'm gonna have to go home and be like, mom, uh, I made you something, but it's definitely not as good as what Chef Tim made. I should have maybe asked you to, you know, make me a little something on the side to bring home for her. <laughs> oh my gosh, yeah, that's funny. this is delicious. Yeah. Is mom still in Sebastopol? Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Well, cheers. Happy birthday out mm -hmm. there, mom. Cheers, mom. Yep. <laughs> we wouldn't be here without our moms. That's for sure. Well, that is amazing. I think mm -hmm. my favorite so far. So good. But it's everything has just been so, so good. good. Neck and neck. <laughs> All right. Hey. Hard to move on without finishing uh, yeah, off that really lobster I don't really want to move on, but, That's going know. against everything in my being to not finish yeah. that lobster <laughs> I'm pretty roll. sure people will get bored with us just eating, though. Yeah, <laughs> true. Um, okay, excellent. Um, next up, we're going to do um, steamed mm. PEI mussels. So they're Prince Edward Island mussels. So they're Canadian mussels. Um, they're really fantastic. Um, I have them right here. Um, this is a lot of times how you will find um, shellfish, whether you go to your local purveyor or um, if you're in my world, chef world, um, they'll come in these little mesh bags, just like so, and they'll come with this little harvest tag that will say when they were harvested and what variety they were. So these are a little, these are mussels right here. And these, these ones lately nowadays, um, you know, they're very, very clean. There's not much fabrication needed. Occasionally you'll find um, these mussels that have a little beard is what they call them. Oh. And that's what they, uh, it'll be right on this uh, sort of flat edge. It'll be just, they call it a beard and it's something that sticks on out there and that's what a mussel holds on to, whether it's a, um, a pylon or a piece of rope out mm -hmm. in the bay. Um, but these are really, really clean. So we're gonna steam them up really fast. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get myself a little pan. I have a yeah. question about mussels. Yes, please. So, you know, you go out to Bodega yep. here, out to Bodega Bay, and you walk along and there's mussels everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Yeah. Do people eat those? They definitely do eat them. I mean, they? I don't know if it's legal or not, or how no. you go about um, harvesting them. Yeah. But. Um, the legality, I'm not exactly sure. Well, that's okay. Yeah. I didn't expect you. Yeah. But, um, but, <laughs> but you yeah. can eat those. Like, people, they're all, yeah. all edible. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, now, you know, you want to be careful with shellfish generally. Yes. You know, you want to make sure that they're handled uh, really um, delicately um, and, you know, you definitely want to keep them super cold at all okay. times, if not ice dripping over them at all times. Um, that's a great question. And we didn't really talk about the, um, you know, the possibilities of maybe a foodborne illness with oysters, which is, right. you know, it, it can happen. Um, but you know. Now you tell me. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't eat that, did you? <laughs> uh, but you know, in restaurants and chefs and, yeah. and foodies, you know, we take the um, the, the the storage and the preparation right. real seriously because we we wouldn't want to get anybody sick. But um, you know, generally, when it comes to the harvesting those sea creatures, my rule of thumb is 
Um, you want to harvest those on a low, t like a, like almost like a negative tide. Right. You want to go out there as far as you can, so you know that a lot of that mussel's life is actually spent underwater. And the cooler months is another. Okay. Um, is so another. they're not out there baking in the sun exactly. in the summer. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that yeah, doesn't you, sound that appealing. No, so. you don't want to do that. <laughs> Um, so, um, yeah, but that's a, that's a great question. And a lot of people um, eat those. Okay. In fact, one of my cooks harvested some last week. All right. Um, and uh, and he, he's been enjoying them. Um, so here we go. We have a, we're going to streamline this process a little bit. Um, uh, normally you would uh, maybe take uh, olive oil and, and saute some garlic in there, add some wine and add some, add some mussels to it and then cover it. And, and you want uh, some liquid in there to help the mussels uh, steam and open up. So I um, cut a little corner here. Um, this is um, sort of our mussel sauce, if you will. And this contains um, um, our uh, extra virgin olive oil here, um, a little bit of slivered garlic. We use some uh, director's cut Chardonnay, although we could have used, I'm sorry, uh, Sauvignon, oh no, Chardonnay. Although we could have used certainly any of those mm -hmm. Chardonnays or Sauvignon Blancs. But that uh, just means that you get to drink the rest of it, right? That's true. You know, we yeah. opened it, right? <laughs> um, so that, and that has a little bit of chili flake too. So we have um, just some wine, garlic, chili flakes, and some extra virgin olive oil. And this is help if you're, uh, if you're entertaining. It's sort of a nice little uh, trick to make it go a little faster. So here we have the mussels, the, the wine, garlic, and chili flakes. And then we're just gonna put that under high heat. And the way you can tell when um, a uh, clam or a mussel is cooked is it'll, the shell will actually open. And if the shell doesn't open, um, then we wanna discard that um, clam or uh, mussel. Um, so we're gonna serve that. Um, real simply, we're gonna finish the sauce with a little bit of butter and um, some fresh herbs. Uh, I picked some fresh tarragon um, from the garden, so that may nice. get your your brain juices flowing. This is tarragon. This is a this is a beautiful herb. Like I said, we got it from the uh, edible garden. It's used a lot in French cookery, um, and um, it's got this really nice licorice flavor, mm -hmm. which I love. I love it with seafood. I love it with eggs, um, chicken, those kinds of sort of lighter flavored proteins. Um, so that's what we're going to do to finish um, finish the sauce. Now, do you do you like mussels? Mussels wouldn't be the first shellfish that I would pick. Okay. I would pick all these other things probably first. Yeah. Um, my favorite part is the broth. Oh yeah, isn't it the best? <laughs> so oh the broth gosh. with the bread or the French fries or yeah. whatever else comes with the mussels. I'm, I'm all you. about that part. Mm -hmm. um, I'm with you. The mussels themselves. You know, when it comes in like a stew or something, mm -hmm. I, those are normally kind of yeah. <laughs> shut to the side. I'll eat them because yeah. there's broth there with yeah. it, but it definitely is. It, it's an interesting flavor, I mm -hmm. feel like. It's yeah. um, maybe it's, something that I haven't tried enough. Yeah. So I, maybe I need to, I'll try more today okay. and see what I can come up with and <laughs> see if maybe I can order them again. That sounds so. good. I didn't like mussels. Um, I mean, I don't really think I liked a lot of seafood when I was growing up. We didn't have a ton of fish um, that we ate in my household in the Philadelphia area um, growing up. Um, but when I was in culinary school, I think I was in my, maybe my early 20s, like 21 or so, um, a, uh, my roommate at the time who was uh, Brazilian, he says, well, you don't like mussels? We gotta, come on, let's go, to, let's go and eat these mussels. And, and just being around him and the whole experience and just his like over the top excitement about <laughs> muscles and how wonderful they were. I mean, I, I'll that never does forget help, it. Right? It, does, it yeah. helps. You when somebody else is like really into it, you're like, well, <laughs> I must be missing the boat. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, oh my gosh, what, you know, what a cool experience. And I was loving these muscles. And by the end of this huge bowl of muscles, I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I mean, I yeah. love muscles now. And he says, okay. you haven't even tried the best part yet. So we had the bowl that there was not a single muscle left in there. Yeah. And then he took that bowl and he poured it into a couple of glasses and he said, now we drink. Oh. And then we drank the broth like that. I'm like, mind blown. <laughs> and I've been a huge fan of muscles ever since. Okay. Yeah. Um, sorry to tear my back on you a little. Um, so you'll see these, 
Mussels are just starting to steam up real nice. See how fast they open? Um, and that's when you know it's cooked. If you guys can smell this, um, it smells fantastic. So they're just about there. So a normal person like me, who yep. is not a chef, yes. where would I even try to get mussels if I mussels. wanted to try to cook myself mussels? Good question. Um, around here, I love Santa Rosa Seafood. Okay. Santa Rosa Seafood, and there's also um, a great seafood market in Petaluma too, okay. if you're more in the south of yeah. uh, Sonoma County. Um, but I think you definitely want to buy them from a reputable yes. fishmonger. Yeah. Um, because I, you know, I just, I really like my shellfish to be super fresh. And, and I just know that these small, um, you know, fishmongers in, in your community are probably yeah. the best place for them. Although I know you can find them frozen. I um, mean, you can find them at, uh, you should be able to find them at a local grocery store. But a specific fishmonger is really what I like. I'm pretty sure I'm coming to you the next time I need mussels, but, you know. <laughs> Got you. Just in case. Yeah. <laughs> I like to cook, but I may not be that adventurous. Yeah, so. that sounds good. I got you anytime you need them. <laughs> okay, so here we go. And that's how fast this is. That's it. I mean, that's, this is a real, especially if you get that sauce going. Um, you know, that is sort of the time consuming part. Um, you know, and this is going to look like a big portion over here, but there's not, there's not a lot of meat in the muscle. Right. So, you know, a lot of the weight of it is the, is the actual shell, just like a lot of these shellfish. But you can see the, you can see that beautiful. Let me see if I can get one for you here. I'm just going to use my hands. Um, you can see that, this beautiful plump meat on the inside there. Um, and that's that's the edible part. The whole the whole thing's edible, um, uh, except the shell, of course. Um, and like we were talking about before, um, I love to have some nice um, crusty bread to to eat with the mussels. Um, so what we're going to do is once the shells are in the bowl, then we're going to um, put the liquid back onto the stove. And we're going to add a little bit of butter to the sauce, okay, just to kind of add some richness and some really, really nice mouthfeel. And then we're going to finish it with um, this fresh tarragon here. And nothing fancy with the tarragon. I'm not going to chop it. I just picked it off the, the sort of woodier stems. And with any fresh herb, generally, we're going to add it right at the last second because you want you want all the, that flavor and those oils of the, of the shellfish to come out. But you want to, con you know, you want to really have that nice, um, fresh, bright flavor. So you can just see that that butter melting and creating this really luscious sauce. And then what we're going to do once that butter's melted, we're going to pour some of it just right over the mussels like so, and then serve. Okay. And then we're gonna have a couple of pieces of bread like that to dip in there. And there you have it. Steamed mussels with Chardonnay, tarragon, and garlic. Yum. There you go. Thank you. You bet. This no. looks amazing. No, but, fun. But now you're gonna have to tell me, how do I actually eat it? Just with a fork? Good point. Straight out? Well, good question, and I'm glad you asked. Sometimes what you can do is you can use the muscle itself oh, to get okay. the muscle meat out of there. So okay. if you have an empty shell, you can kind of use that as a spoon. And you can scoop up the muscle. Yeah, look at that. Okay. And these are super, oh wow. Super fresh that came in this morning. That is really good. Yeah, Actually, that's, that's the best muscle I think I've ever had. So um, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Thank you. Yeah, tasty. Um, and of course, the broth is just amazing. And I like using the little shell as a spoon to scoop up some of the broth too. Okay. So if you uh, put a little broth right so look, in there. Look, I have an extra muscle. He came Bonus. with me, so I'm mm. gonna get two. So I'm definitely getting a little bit of spice from those chili flakes, um, a little bit of acidity from that uh, from that uh, cooked down uh, Chardonnay, that nice um, sort of herbaceous quality from the tarragon, um, almost that kind of licoricey flavor, which I love 
Did you try it with the bread? Oh no, I forgot oh, about boy. the bread. I was oh. so enamored with the mussels. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm. I didn't think that was gonna happen, but mm. it did, so now. Mm. Mm. I love that. That's delicious. Yeah, that's good, huh? Oh. That came out nice. It did come out really nicely. Okay, I think I have to eat one more before I decide. Okay. I'm having a hard time deciding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a tough one. But when you said tarragon, mm -hmm. and you helped me along mm -hmm. with, you know, some French cooking, mm -hmm. I thought to myself, well, we might even be able to go with a red wine. Ooh, nice. And a pinot. Mm. I feel like... Ooh, yeah. that's good. I feel like we can go with the organ pinot. Okay. Um, we can, because it's Ooh. a little more, um, like coastal style. Cool. It, 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 that's what I would like reckon it to be mm -hmm. from here. It's more of like a, a far Sonoma coast kind of style okay. and that the acid is a little brighter. Okay. Um, and I think it will kind of balance with some of the richness of the muscle. So. Nice. I believe that this is it. And of course I keep choosing the ones with the dress and it's hard. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, look, look at that. Yeah, that one okay. was easy. That one was easy. I do love that Oregon Pinot. Yeah, let's see if we can tuck her dress up. There we go, that looks good. And do we do we get some of our grapes from our uh, estate up there, the we Domaine de Broy? Yeah, so Domaine is... de Broy, um, we make you know some very nice Pinot Noirs from up there from our estate property, okay. um, and they're all um, clonal and from certain blocks and all of that. Wow! Um, and sometimes we have a little bit of extra, okay. and uh, so we get to enjoy it down here in California. So wow. we ship it down for our use and. Uh, we get to enjoy these wines. So oh now the dress didn't give me a trouble. Now the foil <laughs> is. Oh my goodness. Okay. Oh boy, we're struggling. It's all right. Yeah. It's just been so good that I can't, you know, focus. <laughs> I'm thinking about mussels and lobster and oh. everything else. How do we do it? I know this is a rough life this that we is, have this, this afternoon. Brutal. This is the best Thursday I can think of in quite some time. <laughs> well, you guys deserve it after the harvest is done. I mean, any uh, normal year you would deserve harvest, it. Yeah. This was a challenge here, but I've heard been. great things about the yep. about the juice. I mean, people watching at home, we, oh, we had on. some fires in the area. And, we did. Um, <laughs> great. Uh, Great reports, though, from all the all the wine or all the grapes coming in, huh? Yeah, we have some really nice wines in house now with great color, great flavors. Um, you know, the the Sauvignon Blanc, like the really early um, ripening varietals, like Pinot Grigio and Sauvignon Blanc, mm -hmm. um, and even a little bit of Rosé, like was unaffected by wow. any of the fires. Okay. Um, and that's just because those are like an earlier harvest? Yeah, they're an earlier harvest. Before the fires even started. Yep. Okay. Um, but we had some challenges even um, with some of our white varietals later okay. on. Um, but what we brought into house is really gonna be an amazing vintage. So wow. I know people have read a lot about, oh, yeah. the 2020 vintage, yeah. you know, you should Not maybe true. steer clear. Yeah. I don't think so because be what incredible. people are actually producing are going to be really nice wines. Wow. That's so exciting. Um, we had to take a lot of extra care, okay. right? Um, mm -hmm. And making sure that the wines that we brought in or the grapes that we brought in were in good condition. Yeah. But thank you. There you go. Let's see what happens. Oh, wow. This is one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I love doing these episodes with someone like yourself who's just so knowledgeable about wine and wine making because I wouldn't have thought this. But as you describe it, it makes total sense. Well, you know, the tarragon, I think, you know, with a red wine, mm. you get some more of those herbaceous, mm -hmm. um, like nice herb flavors yeah. at uh -huh. times and spice. Mm -hmm. um, and this oh, yeah. is, you know, bright cherry and mm -hmm. kind of a, on the brighter red side. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of should hopefully bring out some of the flavors. I love um, it. Does salt, I mean, these dish, these di this dish here, you know, has a nice amount of solidity in it. Yeah. Does that affect how you think about a pairing? Sure. Or, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
there's a it's lot definitely to think about. The list. I mean, yeah. for me, Ooh. you know, people ask me about food and wine a lot, mm -hmm. and I like to eat mm -hmm. a lot, mm -hmm. um, me volume too. and frequency. <laughs> um, but I also like to drink uh -huh. a lot, uh -huh. um, and sometimes I have a hard time actually doing them at the same time because yeah. I'm so focused on one <laughs> or the other. <laughs> so this is actually kind of nice and slowing me down yeah. to make me. Um, do both at the same time. I think um, that definitely works. So, yeah. Mm. Do you think it's good? I love it. I love it. I mean, there's a lot of flavor going on in these mussels. Mm -hmm. And I think going with the red, um, with, you know, with some backbone, I think was a great call. And the garlic with the pinot, the garlic brings that little bit of sort of mm. funk and earthiness. I like this. Yeah. I mean, this wine is really nice on its own. Mm -hmm. um, so, and super easy to drink. But I think with this, it's really nice. This is like a really nice meal. I would be really excited if I was mm -hmm. out to eat here yeah. at Rustic or yeah. wherever and uh, I was served this. I'd be yeah. like, okay, yes. <laughs> bring some more. Bring yeah. that other pot that you have exactly. there. Exactly. And another loaf of bread. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I love that. That is terrific. Great job. Yeah, the humble muscle. Humble. Affordable. The muscle. Mm -hmm. Muscle is pulling through for me right now. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, those are just so fresh. The, the flesh is really firm, super mild, no fishiness at all. Mm. And the bread soaked in there, the best part. Yeah, that is really nice. Well done. Well done. And those that bread, I just, you know, some lo local baguette, sliced. So good. And, and toasted with some of our extra virgin olive oil, which I think is nice and crunchy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is by far, I'll, I'm going to eat all these mussels too. Oh. So. <laughs> Sorry, mom, you're not getting dinner. Mm -hmm. I ordered you something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this well, is so good. Mm -hmm. That was delicious. Well, thank you for uh, turning me on to a new new thing that I wasn't quite sure about. I always think of mussels as being super strong mm -hmm. and kind of on the briny, strange flavor. Yes. But these are not, these yeah. are not that. Yeah, so. no, they're good. Yeah. That's a great mussel. Mm. And a spectacular pairing. So good. Well done. All right, next up. Um, and, and a lot of these things that we've Here. talked about so far are available off our coast. Uh, we started with um, oysters, abalone, um, lobster, of course. Um, we have our spiny lobster out here, um, which I had this past weekend um, when I was uh, up north um, in Mendocino. Mm -hmm. We had a, a and there's a great um, fishmonger and restaurant there, Princess Seafood. Have you ever been there? No. In Fort Bragg. I oh love Fort gosh. Bragg. It's incredible. It's a women um, uh, fisher people, and they also have a market. Cool. And uh, they what cook, is it called? Uh, Princess Seafood. Okay. It's We're amazing. Go there the yeah, next time but we that's go. yeah, that's where I had some great um, uh, lobster there. Um, okay, next up. Oh man, we are yeah. slow. We are slow. It's already three. <laughs> we better barrel Oops. through this. Right Sorry, now. everyone, that you've been sitting here watching us eat and drink. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to barrel through these as fast as we can. Okay. Next up, <laughs> next up, we have some seared scallops. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. Scallops are some of my favorites. Are they? Yeah, and, my and we, family is are not fans because okay. they don't understand the scallop, really? and okay. I love the scallop, so yeah. I get it every time I go out, and I even cook it for myself sometimes. But it's never as good. Yeah. Oh, scallops are. Scallops someone else are, prepares it. Scallops are so good, aren't they? Yes. Um, and you can find those out here too, right? Um, they're rock scallops, um, which are a little smaller, um, but these are from. I'm going to actually, in a effort of time, I'm going to go ahead and fire up our spaghetti for the oh, yeah. next course. Okay. Oh, which I'm um, excited about too, because I love clams. Yes. <laughs> so good. This is the best day for me. Uh-huh. Yeah, we're doing all right. Okay. So I got these, uh, I got the spaghetti noodles going for the next course, which means now we got to stay on, we got to oh, stay man. on schedule. Okay. Um, but scallops right here, there's, it's, um, it's a shell. It's about this big, opens up like so, and there's, there's different parts of the of the creature in here, and then there's this beautiful muscle here. Um, 
And these are ultra fresh, just came in today. Um, and there's a little side muscle on them that you remove that can be a little tough. And then otherwise, this beautiful piece of meat here is ready to go. Um, so we have a, a preheated pan here. We're gonna add, um, we're gonna add a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil or whatever your um, oil of choice is. And then we're going to lightly season these on both sides with salt and pepper. Okay, and in fact, um, I think I'm just gonna season the, uh, the one side now. Okay, and then once they go in the pan, then we can season the other side. Now the key with scallops is to get them really nice and dry. You'll notice they're sitting on just a little piece of paper towel. And they come dry packed, so they, they actually come pretty dry already. But before you put them in a pan, you just want to make sure that they're, they're nice and dry. Um, because that'll ensure a very nice hard sear on the scallops, right? Because that's what you're looking for. You're looking for uh, some nice caramelization on that scallop. And I like a medium rare because I know, as you know, Andrea, that um, scallops, if you cook them well done, then they can get real rubbery. Yeah. And that's usually because um, they are cooked too much, right? Because you can eat these things raw. Um, so, you know, you kind of, you don't want to cook them too hard. All right, so here we go. There's the, there's the scallops being seared. And you can see um, on the bottom edge, they're starting to caramelize. You know, when, when we're cooking, we're using all of our senses. I can, tell, I, can tell, I can tell by the smell. I can tell by the sound. I can certainly tell how it looks and how it feels. Um, so we have to use all of our senses when we're cooking. Now, when I say that you can um, tell by the way it sounds, it, it starts sounding a, a little sharper and a little higher pitched as, as that sear gets harder and there's less moisture kind of coming out. Um, and you can see, you can see uh, starting to get this really nice caramelization here. So we're just going to flip it over just like that. And that's kind of what we're going for. Real nice hard sear. And do you like yours kind of medium or so? I do. Okay. I'll eat them raw as well. Nice. I love sushi and all things on top of a little bit of rice. I'll eat whatever. Awesome. Give me, yeah. Yeah, I had a fish purveyor come time or, or one time come talk to me here, and he was showing off his scallops, and he said, "Oh, go ahead and try them." He reached into a big bucket, was eating them just like that. <laughs> he must eat her four or five just like that. Like, wow, that That's, was an expensive uh, little. Yeah, uh, <laughs> no kidding. Um, so these scallops are just cruising right along. So um, since we're just starting the fall and winter season around here, I decided to make a little butternut squash um, puree. So this is some roasted butternut squash that we uh, mounted with a little bit of butter and a little bit of salt. It's making this beautiful, velvety, creamy sauce. And we're just gonna do a little dollop of this on the plate, nothing fancy. Okay, just like so. And that's just going to add another sort of layer of layer of flavors on these scallops right here. Um, and you can actually look in there and you can see, you can see the little bit of scallop still cooking in there. See how it's still just a little bit, I would say rare, but it, these things move really quickly. So I'm going to flip it one more time. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of butter to the pan. And then they're going to be ready to roll. How do you like scallops, Andrea? Um, just like that. Just like this. Yeah. Yeah, Seared, can't go wrong. Extra crispy on the, uh -huh. on the top and bottom with a little butter. It's delicious. Can't go wrong there. Can't go wrong there. I don't like a lot of fluff with my scallop. No. I feel like the scallop is the showman itself. Definitely. Um, I don't need it, need it to be accompanied by too much. So. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of the, the shellfish, right? Um, yeah. It's just it's got such great, unique flavor to it. 
Yeah, I love how you said that. I feel that. sad for people who don't like it. Yeah, they're <laughs> but, that, out. but it's good for me, because yeah. then there's just more. <laughs> oh, that's, I'll eat your portion, no that's problem. That's true, that's true. All right, there we go, look at that, that's beautiful. So these scallops are just, just coming up to medium rare right now. And we're just gonna plate them right on top of this luscious puree. Simple as that. There we go. Pan roasted scallops for butternut squash puree. Yum, thank there you. There we go. Yeah. It looks so pretty. I don't yeah, wanna. It does. Yeah, you, you said you love it in sushi. I love them in sushi too. Yes. Um, like a scallop hand roll is yes, one of my all-time. Yes, spicy all scallop food. hand roll. So good. <laughs> and everyone looks at me and I'm like, oh, don't mm -hmm. knock it till you try it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. Yeah. Nicely cooked. Mm. Definitely not overcooked. Very sweet. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So sweet. Mm-hmm. And you can see this the cook. This is delicious. You can see the cook in there. If you were going to look at a medium rare steak, or um, that's how I like my scallop. It makes it so tender and, and succulent and fantastic. Mm. Okay, I'm going to go quick like. Okay. I'm going to go pinot. Pinot. I, I'm just going to go straight pinot because I feel like the sweetness from mm -hmm. this is going to really nicely pair. Um, with this, with this Pinot Noir, so. Cool, now which Pinot? We're gonna I know go we have a few different with, options, With right? the Diamond Monterey. Diamond Monterey, yep. okay. So this is more of kind of a classic um, okay. California Pinot Noir. Mm. Um, and I think there's enough flavor and sweetness in that scallop that it's gonna stand up nicely to this. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see, cool. two reds in a row, I don't know. I love Maybe. it. Everybody out there watching, I mean, how much fun is food and wine pairing? It's, it is it's really kind of... fun when you get to have somebody making you the food. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite another when you have to do it yourself. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I was working pretty hard back in that kitchen today. I know, there Thank you are. You. Thank you. Okay. So Monterey. Mmm, wow. Delish. So this has like a really nice, red fruit profile that's almost like dry. I yeah. mean, it is dry, mm -hmm. um, but it but it feels um, a little bit like it coats your tongue Definitely. With, um, with some nice red fruit. And I feel like this sucrosity kind of in the scallop uh -huh. will balance sucrosity. it sucrosity. nicely. Oh, sorry. That's a good that's word. A, that's a funny winemaker word. I love that. That's a good word. So let's try this. How'd, how'd we do? So good. Is it? So good. There's my spaghetti timer, sorry. Um, spaghetti? Yeah. All right, but spaghetti. I think this pairing is amazing. The sweetness of the scallop with the mm. brightness of the pinot is mm. really, really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. And like the, the toastiness of the scallop and the toastiness of the oak in the pinot mm. is kind of a nice balance I there. I love that. Um, Ooh, I could eat that all and day earthy, too. And earthy, earthy too. It is. With the, uh, with the puree. Oh, that is money. That is delicious. Oh my gosh. I, I, I don't know what my poor mama's gonna do tonight. She's not gonna have you're, any I dinner. think you're off the list. You're gonna be getting coal for, for the holidays. I know, I'm gonna be like, sorry. <laughs> I already ate. It was That's amazing. right, yeah. Okay, so, mm. excellent. That is delicious, nice scallop. Andrea. Thank you. That was delicious. Of course. Thank you. Okay. Next up, moving right along, we're going to do a linguine and clam. Now, this may not be um, um, what everybody thinks of, right? and certainly kind of the way we serve it here in Rustic with the whole clams and everything. This is canned clam, and this is something that uh, we do in my house once, you know, once in a while, 
and it's just so easy and so flavorful. You buy these canned clams, you save the awesome juice that's in it. Okay. And uh, instead of wine, like we used to prepare the mussels, I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of this Meyer lemon. So it has olive oil, garlic, um, the, the, the clam liquid, and um, just You know, really I've tried to make together. linguine and clams at home before with canned clams. Yeah. It didn't turn out that great. So yeah. I'm gonna be watching closely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, for me, one of the big things is a really al dente noodle, okay. which I love. Um, and making sure you um, use that liquid that the clams were cooked in. Okay, so those noodles were uh, just cooked very al dente, and then we're gonna allow them to finish cooking in the broth. And then we're gonna add a little bit of these chopped clams right here. These are uh, just canned baby clams. But if you're looking for something fun to eat at home, and you maybe you don't have a ton of things laying around, you know, have a couple of cans of clams and a box of pasta, and, yeah. uh, and then you can put together a beautiful meal. Um, just like we do in rustic, we're gonna finish this with a little bit of um, fresh basil and fresh parsley. Just very, very rough cut. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. You know, we like to cook rustic around here <laughs> and let the, let the food really shine. I'm running out of room over here. Okay, and then that's it. That's all you gotta do. And then we're gonna toss everything together and plate it up. How does that look, Andrea? Good? Uh, yeah. It looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Oh my gosh, if you could smell that. Just like the tarragon. Right? We're going to add those fresh herbs right at the end. Um, so they really maintain that beautiful, bright um, flavor. Once again, if you guys could smell this at home, it smells incredible. Garlic, clams, fresh herbs. Such a beautiful dish and very al dente noodles. That's what it's all about for me. Should have some nice broth. It's just like those mussels. It's so nice to get a little bit of broth. Look at that. That's looking pretty good right that there. That looks amazing. Here we go. Thank you. I already have You're my welcome. fork ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, where's my fork? Okay, there we go. Well, I hope everybody out there is enjoying themselves and letting us know what your favorite shellfish mm. is. How do we do? The fresh herbs is amazing. Nice, huh? Okay, well, mm. this is one of my favorite dishes when I go to like an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. And so I always order it with Sauvignon Blanc, so that's where we're going. Good call. I just, I can't go anywhere else because yeah. this, it's my favorite wine paired with my favorite, you know, mm -hmm. clams, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. it's so good. So I'm gonna go with the bottle of Sauvignon Blanc because I have a plan for the can. Oh, nice. So. Excellent. I love Sauvignon Blanc. And do you know that I love right now that, that? I don't have to open all of these bottles with <laughs> a bottle opener. Mm -hmm. It has really been a time saver for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those twist cans are awesome. All right. There is your wine. Thank you. Mm, see, okay. this, it even looks good together. <laughs> <laughs> it yeah. looks like it goes together. That is a match made in heaven right there. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Nice, Delicious. bright acidity. Yep. Great fruit. Yeah, that is a good one. What do you think of the canned clam? I think they're good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know what I did wrong. <laughs> Maybe it was the big garlic chunks. Yeah. Whenever I cook, I always, you know, mince it. Yeah. Just because I'm afraid yeah. that I'm going to get some big chunk of garlic and then not be able to taste anything else. But that's not happening here. Yeah. So. I like that slivered garlic yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's good. Mmm. You mm. know. Mm. Fantastic pairing. That's a slam dunk right there. Yum. I love that. Oh my Beautiful. gosh. Beautiful. I have so much to eat. I know. We're so going to be here for hours after we uh, stop filming. 
These poor people at home, they must be like so hungry uh -huh. and dismayed that I have so much food that I can't share with them. <laughs> well, we wish everybody out there was with us. Um, now we're going to do something fun. Um, okay. We're gonna do a my take on a crab lily salad, Yum. which I love. And uh, anybody from around here um, who loves crab yes. and salads would love this. Um, so um, this is my take. So a classical crab uh, crab lily salad. Um, you'd find what would you find in there? A hard boiled egg, mm -hmm. uh, tomato, yep. maybe green bean or asparagus or something like that, um, and then some crab. Now it's being uh, winter time around here. Um, I'm going to change it up just a little bit. So what we have here is a little Meyer lemon vinaigrette. I'm excited already. Yeah, I think you're going to like this one. You know, I love my salads. We did a whole episode on salads. I oh. just love salad so much. Um, Especially just, when it has delicious things in it, like that's crab. That's true. I just pile it <laughs> high with crab. Is there lettuce in here somewhere? <laughs> somewhere. Yeah. Um, but it's just, it's, it's, it's so interesting to me. The textures, the colors, mm -hmm. the flavors, right? So these are these beautiful lettuces that we just harvested from our culinary garden. This is a little Meyer lemon vinaigrette, which is um, just picked Meyer lemons, our estate olive oil. We're going to add um, a pinch of salt a pinch of pepper, and that's going to be the base for the salad. Right? Classically, I think you would use like a bib, a bib lettuce yes. type thing. But this to me is just very interesting and um, very seasonal because I just picked it um, before we went live here. So um, you definitely want a little bit of salad on the, or a little bit of lettuce on the bottom. That's just lightly dressed. And then we're going to go in here and we're going to add um, a couple of uh, winter rock stars here. Some uh, roasted golden beets and some broccolini from our garden as well. Okay, so that's gonna go in there. We're also gonna toss that with just a little bit more of that amazing vinaigrette. Okay, and then we're gonna put a little bit of broccoli on the top of the lettuce. Okay, we're gonna put a little of this beautiful golden beet on top of the lettuce. And this, this salad right here just screams crab lily. I'm sorry, screams uh, winter to me. Okay, just like that. Now, normally we would use a hard boiled egg for this salad. Um, I took a little creative license and we're going to do a soft boiled. Okay, just to make it a little more interesting. So we're gonna take a little flaky salt, put a couple of flakes right on top of the yolk. And we're gonna put that there, okay? And then last but not least, the star of the show, some uh, Dungeness crab right here. So this is all the beautiful um, claw and maris and knuckle meat, okay? That's just been blanched, shocked, and picked. We're very, very rustic. Nothing fancy going on here, just pile it up. Just like so. But have fun with this salad. I mean, the, the lettuce is totally interchangeable and really all these ingredients are totally interchangeable. It's really a matter of what looks good at the market. And then um, to kind of bring it all together um, and make it um, as authentic as we can. This is sort of like a crab louie dressing right here. So that's mayonnaise, ketchup, chili powder, a little bit of garlic, and Worcestershire. And what we're going to do is just kind of drizzle a little bit of this. Maybe a little bit on the egg on top of everything, just to kind of bring it all together and make it feel like a real crab louie salad. Looks good. There we go. Crab louie salad. Sonoma winter style here. I'm never going to want another crab louie salad. <laughs> This one I think is going to be pretty good. Oh man. Got a lot going on here. There is a lot going on. Mmm. Mmm. You got to make one of these out there. This is so good. This, uh, that really came out nice. A lot of flavors. A little bit of fennel pollen 
in the crab louie dressing there too. Mm. And super fresh, amazing crab. Oh man, this is so hard. Mm -hmm. Okay. A lot of flavors. But if we're eating salad, mm -hmm. we could be eating salad on a picnic, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I feel like we should go for a can. Good call. Right? Good like, call. We could take this, I mean, Maybe it wouldn't be quite as fancy looking on this plate, <laughs> but we could take this out somewhere, right? And yeah. on a day like today, it was so nice. Yep. Um, I'm, I'm being pulled almost into the Chardonnay can. Ooh. And I know that may sound odd for a salad, but mm -hmm. the Chardonnay is um, like the classic Chardonnay that we have, mm -hmm. but it has less oak intensity. Okay. And I feel like it's gonna be a little bit brighter. Um, and so let's, let's try that and see <laughs> what we think. Nice, that sounds great. Boy, I love that salad. Oh. All right, there's so many we got grapes. a nice cold one here. Oh yeah, there we go. Awesome. Now, the question is, is do you wanna drink it from the can? Oh, I think yeah, you should. By all means. I mean, if we're on a picnic, we're going picnic right? style, huh? You you don't need a glass, so you just bring this your can. salad, and then you. Amazing! You know. Cheers. Cheers. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're onto something there. Yeah. So mm. I like the the crab Louis dressing mm -hmm. is creamy, mm -hmm. um, and this has acidity, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of play back and forth. And mm -hmm. um, I wasn't sure when you said that there was Meyer lemon vinaigrette mm -hmm. kind of thing going, and mm -hmm. but. I think it works amazing. And what an incredible mm -hmm. wine. Mm -hmm. I love these cans of wine. I wasn't so sure when, the, when I first started seeing them in the marketplace, but. I mean, we do such an incredible job with these cans. They're, they're easy. So they're, easy, right? Yep. You can put it in your purse or your back pocket or <laughs> whatever it is that you carry. Man bag. Um, and it's just, it's refreshing and mm -hmm. great. I love drinking out of a can too. Right? It makes you feel like a rebel. Beer, yeah. I like, I love beer too out of yeah, a can. So yeah, this is too. pretty great. Excellent. That mm, is incredible. I, like I really love that salad. The salad is amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to need to eat for like three days. Mm. <laughs> I should have warned you before we started this. Right? Yeah. You won't, you shouldn't eat breakfast or lunch and you won't mm -hmm. need to eat tomorrow. Mm. That's terrific. Mm. Amazing. All right, 12 more dishes and then, uh, <laughs> then we can go home. <laughs> so we're in the I home may, stretch. We may never make it home. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, have a. Uh, Oysters Benedict, maybe, tomorrow for oh breakfast. You know, I was laughing. I was like, there's no way we'll go longer than an hour. <laughs> oh, no. Or, or we might be here all day <laughs> into the evening. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. That is beautiful. Mm, that was good. Yeah. Look, I mean, your station is so nice and neat over there. I could, well, I'm trying to make I it could take like, a... so that way, um, you know, people can look at the dishes still. Yeah. There's nothing really, I mean, it doesn't look as good as they once did. I love that. But really smart. It's so good. Yeah. We got to remember that for future videos. That's a really cool idea. Here, we'll put put our little cute, her adorable abalone shell out here. <laughs> it's like so cute. Uh-huh. Okay. Two more dishes. Okay. So one, we're going to do a very classical shrimp cocktail. Okay. Um, cocktail sauce. Um, horseradish. Uh, ketchup, Worcestershire, lemon, garlic. Um, we're just gonna put a little dollop, or a large dollop, I guess, on the plate like so. I don't know where you're gonna go with this one. Shrimp I don't cocktail. know either, but, you know, this one, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> this one's a little tricky. Um, then we'll I know, do... because the shrimp is one thing, but the cocktail sauce is a whole nother, right? That's true, um, that's true. This is one of those where you're like, well, Yep. Maybe eat the shrimp by itself, then take a little <laughs> sip of the, the sauce by itself. Yeah. Two different wines. That's true. This one's going to be a little tricky. So there we have it. Shrimp cocktail. Simple as that. So when you buy the shrimp, we, we, you know, we take the head off, we peel it, and then we butterfly it, right? Because there's a little digestive tract 
that runs along the back side of the shrimp here. Maybe just cut it open like that before you cook it and you remove any um, strange looking bits that don't look edible. And then uh, you, we poached them. We poached them in a little bit of uh, uh, wine and water and some seasonings. So there you have it. Just like that, a little shrimp cocktail. I do have a question that somebody yes. asked me one time. Yeah. They said, if you've cooked with the wine, yes. should you pair it with the wine? I and I said, say... well, the wine changes when you yeah. cook it, right? Yeah. Or, you know, heat it or totally. cool it down, all yeah. of that. So I didn't yeah. really know the answer. But That's a tough one. You know. I guess it, I guess it depends, but you know, and I've certainly found myself doing that before. Um, but yeah, I think those those flavors are in there. So I think, right. you know, it's not totally crazy. No, it's not. Yeah. I don't think it's crazy either. But I think you can also serve it with something else, definitely. right? That, yeah, definitely. You know, sometimes the wine caramelizes into something else. Yeah, yeah right? that's the true. Flavor, Absolutely. Those flavors change. I love a shrimp cocktail. Mm. It's kind of old school. Mm. So good. And the horseradish. Mm. Delish. Mm -hmm. Too spicy or no? Mm-mm. Okay. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wasn't actually listening when you were describing <laughs> how you made it. I was thinking about all these other dishes. <laughs> so oh, when I good. took a bite, it was really good. Yeah. Um, okay, I have my answer though. Okay. We're going can again. I know that that right. seems silly, but we're going can of Pinot Grigio. Nice. Because I don't want to take away from like the heat mm, and the spice in that. Thank so you. there's your can. Thank you. So something light, refreshing, so good. crisp. Oh my gosh. I thought that this would be a challenging pairing, but now that you're going this way, this makes total sense. Yeah, I like it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the heat, you know, kind of gets cooled down by some of the crisp minerality of the Pinot Grigio. Mm -hmm. The can. Like we could be sitting, you know, on a patio somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Or someone's backyard. Mm -hmm. Makes it super easy for the host when you just serve your wine in cans. <laughs> that way nobody has to do dishes. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Mm. That's going to be my go-to now. So simple too, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these recipes we've done today translate to entertaining when we can safely do that again or, or just with your family. Right. Pulling together these dishes pretty quickly with these great wines. Well, and this is perfect because if nobody else wants to drink wine with me, <laughs> I can drink my own can or two. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You don't have to open a whole bottle. Mm. Wow, I love that. That's fantastic. That great. sauce was amazing. Great call. Yes. There's okay. not much left for me to leave of this plate out though for anyone to look at. I don't <laughs> yeah. think anyone wants to look Those at my, two shrimp my dredges of my shrimp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you want to put a, you want to make it look pretty? We'll put a couple oh, of. Oh yeah, okay. Let's do that. There we'll make we it go. look. There. Here we go. Just one escape. Excellent. Here we go. All right. Last but not least, um, coming to a screeching oh. halt. Oh man, that's kind of oh. disappointing. I know. All right. I know. Well, I could go on. No, no. <laughs> I mean, so could I. I could just <laughs> sit here and eat all of this. <laughs> okay, this is um, this is a dish that is uh, just very near and dear to my heart, um, from an area of the country that's very near and dear to my heart, the South, Louisiana. Um, uh, I don't really have any ties there. I've, I've visited, but I just love the culture, the music, the yep. arts. Um, and, and, you know, being a chef, the food there is just, I love it. Um, so this is a little uh, crayfish etouffee, um, which is, um, uh, in Louisiana, they have a style of cooking called smothering. And this is sort of this um, <laughs> stew, if you will, like a, like a gumbo or a etouffee um, that you just kind of simply serve over rice. So um, we started with the Trinity, which is onions, celery, and, and, and uh, green peppers that we sauteed way down. And we added a little flour and then a little stock, a um, little tomato product, and then at the very end, folded in our crayfish tails. You know, a crayfish can be anywhere from this big to a big one's about this big. They look like little lobsters. It's a freshwater, it's a freshwater critter. Um, and they're very, very good. Um, so I have everything hot here. So um, we'll be able to plate this up pretty quick. So just some, just really beautiful um, steamed rice here. 
And then over here is this little etouffee bay, which is spicy. A little spicy, a little smoky, and uh, looks a little amazing. <laughs> so I think this is a, a great way to end it. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Mm. Full flavored. So then the question is fork or spoon? I think I'm going spoon. I'm going spoon for sure. Okay. Yeah, good call. I just love this. And you'll find this in Cajun and Creole cuisine. Um, you'll find it with mm. uh, shrimp, crayfish, lobster, different preparations like that. Simple as can be. But this to me is Louisiana here. Mm. Okay, I have any spoons left. What do you think? It's delicious. Mm. Mm, I like the little kick at the end. Mm -hmm. A little spice there. Mm -hmm. Oh man, there's there's a lot that I feel like you could pair with this. Yeah. Um, you could totally go Chardonnay because the sweetness and the boldness kind of of the oak and everything will go nicely with the spice. Yeah. But I want to go red. Oh, nice. Just because this is, it's hearty. It is right? hearty. And <laughs> I feel like some of it um, could be cut a cut back a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting here kind of scanning, thinking mm -hmm. <laughs> um, what it should be because it could really go with so many different things. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm gonna go a little bit on the lighter side. Okay. So I think I'm gonna go ivory. So I'm, I think Ooh. I'm gonna go with the Cabernet. Cool. Um, and I don't think you would normally pair crawfish or crayfish or yeah. however you wanna say it yeah. with Cabernet. Yeah. But this Cabernet is like really easy to drink, yeah. red fruit, really fruit forward, um, and just a nice, easy drinking, medium bodied Cabernet. Nice. So I think, I think it'll play nicely with, with the flavors here. So. Great idea. So fun too. So let's see. Mm. Mm. So what has been your favorite dish today? Oh my gosh. It's hard oh to my say, gosh. isn't it? I, it is hard to say, but I really like the idea that um, I wasn't really that fond of mussels before. Yeah. And now I could, I definitely am going to eat that whole thing. <laughs> um, so that's exciting to me yeah. um, that I, I got to try something that I'm not as familiar with and yeah. as not as comfortable with. So. Cool. That's awesome. Um, I don't even remember what we paired it with. <laughs> oh yeah, it was Pinot, I think. It was a long time ago. <laughs> many, uh, many dishes ago. Yeah, I get a lot of that after these uh, videos are shot that my guys say, hey, what did you end up paired with that? Don't know. You should don't go back and watch the video. <laughs> it was just oh, so much wine and so much food. Wow, what a treat. A fun way to end too. Yes, so, this is amazing. A little shout out. All right. Are there any people out there from Louisiana? Mm, I love Louisiana. Thank I've you only so been much. there a couple of times in mm -hmm. my life, but every time I've ever been there, it's been it's the amazing. most exciting, most fun I've, totally. I think I've ever had. So. Yeah, an amazing city. Oh, I can see that. Oh, yeah. And this, I mean, this is, you know, a, a ready to drink type Cabernet, it is. right? It I mean, is, it's, just... it's like a nice little warm hug. Mm -hmm. And I feel like this is a nice warm hug, right? Mm -hmm. This is like the perfect fall or winter meal. Like not only the warmth of the food, but mm -hmm. the warmth of the spice. Oh yeah. Oh, I love that. Mm. That is amazing. Mm. That is awesome. I love it. Nice job, Andrea. This was a good Thank way you. to spend. Next Thursday, we're gonna eat some right? more and drink okay. some more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure someone else gets to do it. But the next one, I'm gonna be like, oh, it's my turn again. My turn again. Well, this thank was amazing. you so much you. for being here. Yeah, yeah it was you. fun to get to hang out. Yes. I know we our paths haven't crossed much recently, right. but uh, yeah, it's the COVID nice. mask. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's it true. It keeps us all under wraps. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yeah, it was just a real pleasure to have you. Yeah, Thanks thank you. for all your expertise and knowledge yeah, and thank you. all this information about these incredible wines. 
Um, and thanks to everybody out there who yeah. watched. Sorry, we, uh, we went a little long today, but uh, we tried to keep it as short as we could. Just had a fantastic time. Get out there, try some shellfish dishes. Now's the time to have it. And uh, head to our website, thefamilycopla.com, and, and pick yourself up some of this incredible diamond wine. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Andrea. Cheers. We'll see you next time, everybody. Thank you so much.